What's up everybody, Z Wade Photo, back just moments after the last film camera video that I did. You won't know that because these are going to release at different times, but that's why I'm wearing the same shit and still looking like I just woke up even though it's like noon. It's Sunday, I don't really try that hard to do this on Sundays, it's my day. It's like Sundays are for like laundry and watching TV and making YouTube videos. Today we are talking about the Nikon FM2. This is a step up from the uh, Nikon Mat EL. And I say that because not only is it newer, but this right here, one four thousandth of a second. This was a pretty big deal at the time because one four thousandth of a second in this lightweight, <laughs> this allowed you to shoot F1.4 no problem, right? If you get the right film, the right ISO, you don't have to live in F16 or some other kind of crazy aperture that I personally never shoot in. I think they made this camera until like early 90s, like maybe 1990. That's how popular this camera was. This, I would consider this a, you know, prosumer or a very, um, a very advanced hobbyist. You can do things with this camera that you can do with modern cameras because that shutter speed is so fast. I would not consider the Nikkermat EL that you might have seen in the last video to be a very good portrait camera just because the shutter, at least not outside, <laughs> shooting it outside, it's not a good portrait camera. You might be able to make something work in like a dark studio on a tripod, but this you can make this work outside and you can get beautiful bokeh because you're not constantly battling the sun with your aperture. You can battle the sun with your shutter speed. As far as price, this could be a good place to start if you want to experiment with film. Even if you're uh, a, a fairly advanced photographer, but you've never shot film, but you like, you know your business. This cost me about 230 bucks. They can be had for five and six hundred dollars, essentially brand new in the box. Obviously, they don't make these anymore, so you're probably not going to find one completely unused. But I did find one for two hundred dollars, which I thought was ridiculous. And the film, the uh, the film rewinder was actually missing. The only thing wrong with this one is on the film rewinder that dangles. I don't know if you can see that, but the actual rewinding handle. It, it doesn't like lock in or anything like that. It's totally fine. It's no big deal. 220 or 30 bucks. You know, typically they hang out around two, $260, which I think is a good buy. If you're thinking about getting a film camera, I would save your money a little bit to get one of these for, you know, $150 more or so rather than the Nikkermat EL just because of the one four thousand shutter speed. I've said that a thousand times, I feel like in this video, but that's a big sell point of this thing because you can essentially operate this like a modern digital camera. You know, uh, modern digital cameras typically are one eight thousandth of a second, you know, but I mean, one four thousandth of a second, that's that's close enough. If you can't make that work, you're terrible at photography. Something else about this camera, it does have the um, <laughs> the little pocket to put your tear off from your film in. That way you can see exactly what film you're shooting. I do not have any film in here, so I will let you hear this. Oh, right. Ready? Yes. <laughs> that is so satisfying. Again, this camera is all manual. Uh, it does have a light meter that's actually battery powered and the battery actually goes in the bottom. I didn't mention this on the Necromat EL, but the batteries actually go under the mirror. It's kind of a motherfucker. Sorry, Nikon, that was a dipshit design. But this is easily accessible right in the bottom. It takes a couple SR44 batteries, I believe. Uh, really easy to find. Now again, you're not gonna be able to look into the viewfinder, but on the right side, there is a simple, like, plus or minus kind of system. So it's plus, a circle, and minus. If it's minus, you're underexposed. If it's plus, you're overexposed. And if it's zero, that means you've got the right exposure. This does have a little timer on it. You just crank that over, push the shutter, and it click. 
That's kind of nifty. I'll never use it because I would never dare use this for a self-portrait. Just like on most of these old film cameras, it has a depth of field preview. The, uh, the Nicker Matte EL has that as well. This one feels a little bit better uh, just because it's more of like a lever type. And that's pretty nifty. They have those on DSLRs too. A lot of people don't use them. And in the case of Nikon's mirrorless cameras, they've got a big problem with their depth of field preview. It's really stupid and they need to fix it. Something to love about old film cameras are just like the simplicity and the efficiency of, of everything. Like I feel like modern cameras, like they waste a lot of real estate on their cameras. This, everything is just like, you can literally control the entire thing with like one hand, right? You're not gonna be messing with the film rewinder while you're shooting, but I mean, everything is right there. There's nothing wasted. Like the landscape of this camera is super, super efficient. You know, you have your lever, you have, and this is even cooler on this camera, instead of having your ISO over here under the film rewinder, which I don't really like on the Nicker Matte EL, this, you actually pull up, let me get the light right, you actually pull up on the uh, shutter dial, you pull up on it, and that allows you to change your ISO. It's, it's kind of nifty. That's going to be really hard to show you. But uh, there's a little um, view, it, uh, a little like cutout for like the view of the ISO. And you just pick that up and you twist it and you set it, you, you know, your ISO. Really super nifty, really efficient. I feel like like if I drop my, my Z6 or Z7 from here on the table, they're probably done. Like they're, it's game over for it. This thing, I'm pretty sure I can throw this at somebody. I'm pretty sure you could take this into a combat zone and you could crack somebody over the head and then continue to take pictures of the battle as it unfolds, right? You could, if like, oh, let's say you're a combat photographer, like in Vietnam or whatever, and this camera wasn't out in Vietnam, but you know, something similar was, and you're taking pictures, you take it on your strap and you do this here and you throw it, clink, you just keep on taking pictures because that's what you do. You're a combat photographer. So anyway, this camera is a really good buy. Like I said, around 200 to 200 or $300, something like that. If you go up to the ones that are like minty, 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 uh, those are way overpriced. The price of film cameras is going up because it's getting ever more popular. Although that is not going to last. Check out my next video whenever I tell you whether or not you should or should not get into film photography. But this camera is a good buy around $250 and will get you really close to being able to accomplish the kinds of things that you do with modern digital cameras. That's a wrap of this episode of Z-Wade Photo. Do you have this camera? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you thinking about getting it? Are you thinking about getting into film photography? What are your reservations? If you found this video helpful and informative, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't ever miss my videos. You can consider making a small donation in the PayPal link below. All those things help this channel grow, and I will catch you in the next one.